Did you ever have one of those days where you made plans for the weekend and everything went kaput? I had a whole homily plan this week, and then I saw the storm like, yeah, not going to be big crowds. I'll wait till next weekend. Mother Teresa used to say, if you, don't, if, um, if you want to make God laugh, tell him your plans. So it's very true. So we're doing alternate homily this weekend. <laughs> what I had planned, I'll do that next weekend. You know, they say that marriage is 50-50. 50-50. And I remember one time a deacon said to me, he was a married deacon, he said, Father, marriage is not 50-50. That's a lie. Marriage is 100% and 100%. If someone's only giving 50%, they're only giving 50% of themselves. And it's true that there is a compromise of 50%, but in the act of love, it could never be a 50% gift. It can never be a 75% self-gift in the act of love, in the life of love. It must be a 100%, 100% self-gift to the other, because love is total, complete self-gift to the other. And so it requires the fullness of oneself in giving oneself to the other in relationship. Now, this could be said for marriage, but it also includes the priesthood. I, as a priest, have given my life to Christ. I can't love God and love the church with only 50% of my heart. And then, you know, the church has to give me 50%. It doesn't work that way. I have to give a 100% gift of myself to Christ in love, as an act of love, as an act of love for the church. I must give 100% of myself. When priests only give 100% or 75% or even 90%, the parish suffers. They themselves suffer because they're not the fullness of who they should be. Just as in a marriage when one or the other spouse is not giving the full percentage of themselves, the marriage suffers and they themselves personally suffer. In friendship it's the same way, but on a different level, a different way, because in friendship there's a different relationship there, but even in friendship. It truly must be a loving of the other with the fullness of oneself, the fullness of the heart, with the proper boundaries of friendship. Love requires a 100% gift of self. And because we're broken people who live in a broken world, who get broken by other people, and sometimes we're the ones breaking other people in our own brokenness, we're not always able to give that 100% of ourselves. We've been hurt by others, whether that be in our growing up years or in relationships or whatever. And so when we get hurt, we turn to hold back and reserve. And usually when things happen or perhaps things go wrong in our lives, there's, there's something lacking in us that a lot doesn't allow us to be that self-gift. Or there's something in our way that doesn't allow us to be self-gift. Some blockage we've put there is some blockage that's been created that we hold back and we don't give our full selves. Either we're lacking in something or there's something there blocking us from being self-gift. Now this is true in relationship, but it's also true in relationship with God. It's also true in relationship with God. And truly when we get our relationship with God in the right direction and our relationship with God is being fixed and healed and is growing and maturing, then our other relationships will also begin to mature and heal because only God can truly fill those things in us that are lacking, fill in those holes, and only God can knock down those mountains that are in our way that stop us from loving. It's when we become closer to God, deeper in union with Him in prayer, that we begin to see those valleys in our life that need to be filled, those mountains in our way that need to be leveled out. I think of this this morning as I'm listening to the prophet Isaiah in the first reading here, that the Lord comes to make straight in the wasteland a highway for God. Every valley shall be filled in, every mountain and hill shall be made low, and rugged land shall be made a plain, the rough country a broad valley. It's like, any obstacle will be removed or filled in, one of the two. There's this need in our lives to begin, 
to grow in our deeper union with God and to grow in holiness with Him, and that will extend out to our other relationships, allowing us to then have deeper and more meaningful relationships, whether those be friendships or marriage, or whether it be our relationship with God, or as parents to children, or children to parents. The closer we are with God, the more like God we become, and therefore, the more human we are to those around us. The 12 fruits of the Holy Spirit are truly what we would call the maturing of the human person. Because we were created to be like God, the more like God we are, the more human we are. The less like God we are, the less human we are. And the less human we are, the more we begin to hurt those around us. The more like God we are, the more human we are. And then we become more of a person who's good and and so forth. And we become uh, much more of a pleasant person to be around. And we don't do as much breaking, we do more healing. The more we're like God. So the 12 fruits of the Holy Spirit, what they are, are the evidence of the maturing of our person. So we think of the word charity. Charity is the first fruit of the Holy Spirit. See, when we grow in union with God, God is love. What is love? Love is charity, right? So God is love. The more we become like God, the more of a loving person we become. That fruit of love becomes evident in our lives. That capacity to be able to be self-gift to another but also the capacity to receive the gift of another. Love isn't just the generosity of giving, but it's also receiving the gift of another person. Receiving them for who they are, even in their brokenness and woundedness. Love opens the heart to be self-gift, but opens the heart to receive the gift of that other person, even in their brokenness and their woundedness. It allows the heart to have that compassion, that empathy, that allows it then to care for others. The second fruit, joy. Joy. When we have the deeper union with God, it brings about joy within us. That's a fruition of God's living within us, that we become joyful persons even in the midst of suffering. Not that we blow off suffering, not really thinking it's no, we endure it, we go through it, but there's a sense of joy of knowing that God has got this. To be a joyful person, you know, sometimes it can be annoying to be around joyful people when we want to be miserable. But joy is, a joyful person to be around is always a good thing because they, they have a way of lightening the mood, right? They're a ray of sunshine. You know, there's a joy. We have joy in our heart. We don't bring other people down. We lift them up. A third gift, peace. Peace is a, is a fruit of the Holy Spirit. The deeper in union with God, the more peace we have in our own souls. And then we bring that peace into our families. We bring that peace into our relationships. We know how to administer peace when there's tension, when there's stress in relationship. We know how to be calm, to rest, and to see it clearly and be peaceful in the midst of what might be turmoil. And Lord knows in holidays, the turmoil gets real bad, right? (laughs) Fourth, patience. Patience. Ooh, this is tough when driving, right? Especially when it's Boston traffic or something. Patience. That is a fruit of the Holy Spirit. The deeper union, the more patient we become. Patience is not a virtue. Patience is a fruit of the Holy Spirit. To grow in patience, we need to grow in union with God. But the more patient we become, we become like God when we're patient with those around us. We're not so quick-tempered, not so quick to say things negatively, put people down, not so quick to be angry. In patience, we take it slow, we back up, we're calm, and there's no rush on things. And there's a peacefulness with patience. Kindness. Kindness is a fruit of the Holy Spirit. To be a kind person. You know, wouldn't it be nice if someone could say to us, they're truly a kind person. Right? God is kind. To us. And the more we're like him, the more kind we become. And how that brings such peace to relationship and friendship. When we union with God, kindness bears fruit. Sixth, goodness. Goodness. 
to truly be a good person to those around us. When we enter into that union with God, we become like him, and that God is good. And then we, as we grow in union with him, and we're getting rid of that stuff through a life of prayer and through a life of penance and working out those things in our hearts, we become a good person, then we become good to people around us. Seventh, generosity. To be a generous person. A person of true generosity, because God is generous. Not to be selfish or self-seeking, not to be greedy, but to be able to be generous with our hearts and with our lives, with our things, and with our time, with the care for other people. That generosity. Gentleness. Gentleness is a fruit of the Holy Spirit. To learn how to be gentle. God is very gentle. And so when we come close to God, we become like Him in our gentleness with each other in our relationships, our friendships, with parenthood, and so forth. Fidelity, faithfulness. To be truly faithful as God is faithful. To be a faithful friend, a faithful spouse, a faithful parent. Faithful in prayer, faithful in the vows we made to God at baptism, confirmation, at marriage. To be faithful. We're getting near the end, hold on. (laughs) Modesty. Modesty meaning humility. If there's one thing that helps a relationship grow, it's humility. To be able to be humble in the relationship. How many relationships are destroyed through pride? We never really think about how powerful pride is, but pride was the cause of the fall of Satan. Pride was the cause of the fall of our first parents. Pride destroys so many friendships. It destroys so many relationships. Pride is such a destructive, destructive force. And yet we cling to it so easily when we should be horrified at the sin of pride because of what it could do to our relationships, to ourselves. It's destructive, pride. But the more we become like God in his humility, particularly the humility of Bethlehem, the eternal son of God is born in a poor, homeless child in a stable. The more humble we become, the more our relationships have that peace, that patience, that kindness, that goodness, that generosity, that joy, that peace, that comes from that humility in relationship. Self-control. How necessary self-control is in relationship, right? You want to say those things you shouldn't say? Mm, Control that tongue. (laughs) You know, control the emotions. Control the mind from going where it should go and judging others. Controlling the heart from flaring up with emotion. That self-control that's necessary. That comes from a deeper union with God, that God gives us that grace to control the thoughts so they don't go where they shouldn't go, to control the heart so it doesn't enrage where it should, to control the tongue so it doesn't say what it shouldn't say. i got to get that with my tongue. And finally, chastity. Chastity is a chaste love, a pure love, a truly pure love for the other. A true pure love for one's spouse, a true pure love for one's friends, a true pure love for one's children, a pure love for one's parents, a self-gifted, complete love that is rightly ordered and rightly directed. That comes when we know the true love of God for us. So I ask today, as I read off this list of 12 fruits of the Spirit, what do we lack? What do I lack? What's the valley in my life? What's that valley that I'm missing that God needs to raise up? What's that mountain in my way that needs to be knocked down to clear that clear path to God and my clear path to a healing relationship with others? Perhaps just think about those things today of what do I need to grow in? And what obstacle needs to be removed from my life that I could truly be that person who stands in the image and likeness of God, who could truly be charitable, Joyful, peaceful, patient, kind, good, generous, gentle, faithful, modest, self-controlled, chaste. To be truly like God. Truly be holy. Because holiness is the one thing our world needs more than anything else. May the good Lord today give us that grace to raise up those valleys of our lives to lay low those mountains that block us from loving, that we might truly become 100% self-gift to God, experience his 100% self-gift to us, and then we can truly be self-gift to one another. 
May God bless you. And Merry Christmas.